and i now request my friend dr sanjay gambhir to talk about the role of mibi scan in heart failure dr sanjay gambhir is the professor head of the department of nuclear medicine at scpj lucknow incidentally this is one of the one of the largest nuclear medicine facility in the country with state of art facilities over to dr sanjay gambhir please good afternoon uh, thanks dr prabhu dr mahapatra for this invite so it's been very great listening to the eminent speakers since the morning uh, getting introduced to many of the uh, facts and the way the cardiologist looks at uh, this disease of chf we don't usually get such patients so it's a new area for us but of course nuclear medicine has made uh, inroads uh, yes of course you can hear you uh, doctor okay. okay. slides are also visible all right thank you so uh, my role today is to present role of spect imaging in chf it was earlier maybe so maybe the methoxy isobutyl isonitrile our mainstay of uh, myocardial perfusion imaging is imaged with spect now if we talk of role of spect in chf so maybe does not alone remains the only ligand available to us to you know uh, to potentially uh you know uh, foray into this area of chf imaging with the spect so i'm sure next uh, talk is on the pet in chf so i'll 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 restrain myself to the spect and ligands used in the spect imaging so uh, this is from the european uh, society of cardiology guideline and it has been mentioned since the morning how they look at and work how do you describe and define the syndrome of the Uh, uh chf basically clinically and then we heard a good talk on bnp echography and abnormal this thing so the definition is clinical based on the the uh, biomarkers from the blood from the serum until this point no imaging comes into play except the echocardiography so if you have labeled a patient as heart failure and then you define the phenotype as has been mentioned so hfrf hf mrf and the uh, the 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 uh, hfpf as they call it so these terms come more naturally to the cardiologist for the the uh, the maintained ejection fraction or low so these are two and as we have heard since the morning the the cardiologist is more concerned with the pf the hfpf where the the function is maintained ejection fraction is maintained or on drug it gets improved so still there is a heart failure so what to do and what new technologies and 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 various things uh, uh, come into play so at this stage what one needs to determine is the etiology and the treatment so what is this which is causing this heart failure and, and the the if it's not been the cause has not been diagnosed and if one can find the cause then one can treat the cause and maybe it helps and other is the treatment once you have labeled and you know you can't do much about the cause so you have to treat we've heard very few uh, lectures on the treatment and i i'm sure there will be more so from this point of view how do we work up how do we step in with spec in nuclear medicine in helping where can we play a role in in chf so causes of chf on top is coronary artery disease the few are highlighted cardiomyopathy infiltrative and infective hair and there are many more so where all nuclear medicine can help to uh, make the diagnosis so we know at the top end is the coronary artery disease we have been doing it very old technology with myocardial perfusion imaging with mibi or earlier with thallium one can get all the parameters of some stress score visually see the areas which are under perfused or which fill in and various parameters of left ejection fraction and also the 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 strain pattern it it's possible to get that also but till now we have not been including that but as of now the typical myocardial perfusion imaging gives the etiology okay this patient has come in chf so if the uh, if the cardiologist refers and suspect coronary artery disease so uh, mpi with me is one of the way to go now hybrid image is coming we've had discussion in earlier meetings also mri is also there the choices with the cardiologist guidelines are given by various societies for this diagnosis 
but uh, nuclear medicine with uh, spect maybe is one of the established technique for for the same so cardiomyopathy and infiltrative disease are there so one of the mainstay where we can help is with the mpi this is a very standard technique and so if we see with mpi we can do thallium as i mentioned and we get parameter of ejection fraction viability and that kind and if i come to some specific ligands radio pharmaceuticals for spect imaging especially in case of cardiac and that too in case of cardiac uh, chronic heart failure it is 123 mibg and 99 technetium pyrophosphate and we have our good old muga the multi gated acquisition with blood pool imaging agent with the human serum albumin or rc so they will give us wall motion desynchrony so i am going to focus on these new ligands mibg and pyrophosphate me mpi i have mentioned is a very old standard technique i can give you it all so where suspected clinically next thing is the the new kid on the block is amyloid so these are ca- present as cardiomyopathy and if from mr or something is suspect is there that is a infiltrative disease or deposits are there and it could be amyloid so short of endo myocardial biopsy which is the good technique no longer called the gold standard now what is being resorted to is the amyloid imaging with technetium pyrophosphate very cheap agent very easily available you inject and do the imaging and you get the diagnosis of the wild type of the amyloid the light chain variety where there is misfolding of this so it is just a planar image i don't have the image here so what i am trying to show from this table so these two are where have a direct role in c so you can know the etiology that amyloid disease is there you suspect you confirm i'll come to the mibg sympathetic innervation and 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 this this synchrony in a while so if we see the again the guidelines from uh, various cardiac societies and if we come to the treatment of acute or chronic heart failure the coronary angiography so they have the the, the as we know uh, what we call the level of uh, clearance for this thing and uh, angiography is one and level one and stage one level a and non invasive imaging ischemia viability with coronary spect ct cmr stretch echo they have all have been put together as to be right in this so they are not at top but recommendable that's what it basically means so this is for the uh, chronic heart failure if you are looking for the involvement of the uh, vascular the coronary involvement so th- this is one study i just like to read the red part of it so this correlates M- mpi with a known more than 70% blocks and and comparing it with the the computed mpi image so the presence of significant left ventricular disease was evaluated by phase standard deviation and histogram bad view that's what we usually used to find with moga it is also possible with spect mpi and they have correlated in the real you know 70% blocks and they have found that left ventricular disease is frequently which is which is a precursor to the to to the chf is frequent in patients undergoing mpi for suspect so this was a suspected mpi group but they found on top of it presence of myocardial perfusion abnormality and end systolic volume so the is not the is independent of the coronary artery disease but long segment how much uh, artery is involved is the presence of myocardial perfusion abnormality and left ventricular and diastolic volume so part of again strain group and and the amount of perfusion so that comes along with the myocardial uh, perfusion imaging what we have been talking with the strain but Uh, till now they have not been popular that information is there so this can be added and and a very good correlation has been found in this study of uh, 2016 now i come to the the the, the sympathetic uh, neuron system that is the uh, 123 id in mibg so this is the standard uh, uh, cartoon of the innervation of the heart the vagus the sympathetic so we come to the synapse and the nor epinephrine comes into the cleft and it is retaken is taken up 
and this reuptake of epinephrine is a phenomena at the molecular at the functional level much beyond your or early to your strain and all those things involved so in 1988 this agent of iodine 123 mibg comes up so iodine 123 is labeled with the with the analog of uh, uh, norepinephrine that is mibg metaido ben benzyl guanidine so it reflects the reuptake of nor epinephrine into the into the neurons which are innervating the in myocardium so it's the talk between this uh, neurons and the myocardial cell the myocyte which really plays that bridge and role to show the real functionality of it so once iodine labeled uh, mibg goes back into the neuron so you get the image of the cardiac cilia so to say so the ratio of uptake of cardiac um, and as compared to the, the surrounding area or the mediastinum gives the real uptake of the this agent. So when once this uh, mechanism triggers, so basically there is a withdrawal of parasympathetic tone and increased. So this is the way it is done. The standard planar images are done at one hour and at three hours and the uptake ratio gives whether the sympathetic uh, system is dying down going back or the, uh, or uh, still surviving so the the hazard ratio worked out with these have been shown in this admire hf study and which has shown the relation with mort mortality uh, in this study so one point uh, the the hard to mediastinal ratio of 1.60 is the cutoff where you can see the big change in the mortality occurring so iodine 123 mibg tells you at the molecular level that this heart is, uh, you know, in, in dire straight and one needs to, uh, you know, bail it out with whatever in, uh, intervention one wants to give. So a further admire HFX study has been done in Japan, which has validated the same. So the annual mortality rate really falls if the uptake goes up. So with the drugs and intervention, uh, this uh, uptake comes back if there is a capacity in the heart uh, to uh, recoup. So this is what it tells. So you can make your choice of intervention, the cardiologist, whether there is a capacity in heart to do it, whether they are putting the intracardiac device or, or they, they are uh, uh, putting any other device. So we were to talk just a few slides on the dyssynchrony. So this is the left ventricular dyssynchrony and the phase analysis from the nuclear cardiac images has always been regarded as a reference standard for that. So when the, we were talking of modeling and remodeling and implantation of the cardiac device, so the CRT implantation, so whether it is going to help or it is not going to help the discrete data from MUGA or maybe can help there. This is a well-known data. The issue is with all this, this is the way we do the phase imaging and you can see the responder versus non-responded in the CRT implantation. Based on the clinical, they say if you better do it based on the MIBG basis, the response is better. So you know which patient is likely to respond to your intervention and which one is li less likely. So by... Uh, there are other parameters, you know, cardiac dyskinesis benefit from the re resynchronization therapy, wide QRS, standard EC measures. But if you include iodine 1, uh, 1, 2, 3, MIBG, your score goes much higher. And still, they were talking of drugs. Our cardiologists were talking in the morning. Always there is a group which does not respond the way on clinical basis and standard parameter they are thinking. So there are always gray zones. So Precision medicine is the buzzword. So which technique to use for precision medicine? This is one of the way to go. So before intervention, we were talking of optimization of drugs also in the morning. So they said we start, when do we stop? So very interesting discussion. So these techniques can help. So that ligand is old, FDA approved ligand is there, MIBG, but the clinical independent studies are not many. The data is building up. So there were for in the societal meetings and all, it has not been yet included in the guideline. 
but all those uh, 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 centers who have uh, uh, the hold on this uh, agent, they use it very regularly. More of data on, on, on same thing. So for paucity of time, I'll skip some of the slide. So CRT contributes to a marked improvement in non-ischemic uh, patient with non-compacted myocardium. Phase analysis with maybe on top, we get the phase diagram, the spread out of this thing. So this is the patient pre-CRT and this is the phase diagram on the bottom post-CRT. So they come to a certain angle around the, the center of axis. So the data here, the, the, the disc screen is there. The phase data is spread out along the x-axis. So there are the heart beats differently, the different part of chamber beat. So EF was 26 and after intervention, it has become 34. So these are the few standard techniques, MIBG and, and, and our phase analysis, which is very good. There's a lot of data and more clinical work is required. It's not early data. This data is matured, but uh, not used by everyone as yet that I would say. So in conclusion, I would say we can help in diagnosis with SPEC, coronary artery disease, amyloidosis, prognosis on based of our standard uptake and uptakes of MIBG and ejection fraction and lung uptake of radioform. Treatment and follow-up in discrimination and need for the CRT. Thank you very much.